Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Hallie Caldwell, and I am a member of the Inspirit Advantage team. Um, thanks for joining our webinar on how medical school admissions decisions are decided and what matters most within those. We have two fantastic panelists with us today who are admissions counselors with us. Um, we're thankful that they're here in the middle of a work day. Um, I just want to give a quick overview about Inspirit Advantage for those of you that don't know. We're a company that supports medical school applicants and students applying to other um, schools within the medical field. We help um, applicants from the very beginning of their process decide what schools to apply to, um, craft their applications, personal statements, their extracurriculars, and help through secondary um, applications, residency applications, and everything that's involved with the medical school process. Um, so I just wanna thank you all for being here today. Um, so just to give a quick overview about what we'll be covering, we'll introduce our two panelists. We'll talk about what a holistic review process is and entails, the factors that matter most to admissions committees, um, how fit factors into admissions decisions, how to show off your fit and tips for success. And then we'll open um, things up for a Q&A. So feel free as we go through the presentation to pop questions in the Q&A box and we'll definitely get to those at the end. Um, so we have Peruj here with us. Do you mind introducing yourself? Hi everyone, my name is Peruj. I'm a fourth year medical student uh, over at Duke. I went to Duke for undergrad, studied neuroscience and now I do research looking at the ocular imaging interface between the eye and the brain. And my plan is to apply into ophthalmology residency. Fantastic, thanks for being here. Nakia, can you introduce yourself? Hi, my name is Nakia Sarad. I'm currently a PGY4, a fourth year resident at New York Presbyterian Queens in Flushing, New York. I'm doing my research year right now in my six year residency program at Wild Cornell Medical Center in vascular surgery. And hopefully next year I'll be applying for vascular surgery fellowship. Awesome, thank you so much. Um, all right, so we'll talk about what the holistic review process is. So the holistic review process is in recent years uh, become the method by which a lot of US MD programs will select candidates. Um, and uh, what this entails is looking not only at just uh, your academic performance, but uh, looking at that in the context of your background and of your experiences. And uh, here we have a quote from the AAMC discussing that. Uh, what this really means for you is uh, to have a broad range of experiences and not only just be a strong student, but uh, contextualize that in terms of someone who is dedicated to medicine uh, in multiple ways so that you'll not only show success as a medical student, but also as a future physician. Great. Next slide. Here from the AMC, we have the experiences, attributes, and metrics model. So you see a lot of uh, factors playing into what is used to uh, decide on medical students here. In the middle, you have metrics, which are certainly uh, extremely important and foundational to any application. Um, you have your MCAT score, your GPA, as well as how your GPA has trended, trended over your uh, pre-med career, be that just undergrad or also including post-baccalaureate education. And then in the context that you have your background in terms of uh, who you are and what your life experiences are. And outside of that, we also include experiences, uh, be that in research or service or uh, leadership. All these things play a role in uh, how medical schools assess their candidates. Here, we kind of break this down into core principles of the, of the holistic review process. Selection criteria are broad. This is intended to have people from a diverse range of experiences come into medical school. Uh, academics are very important, but on top of that, we have attributes and experiences as discussed in that model. Um, schools are looking for people who have something tangible to bring to medical school and to a field of medicine. So those are very important when they're looking at your experiences and your background. And then specifically about background, this can, uh, comprise a variety of factors, uh, race, ethnicity, life experiences. And uh, oftentimes many schools will have mission related statements that discuss how important this is. 
uh, to their admissions decisions. So there are some core competencies that AMC provides and that medical schools are looking for uh, on this list. And this is what they look in your application. Um, you can say in your personal statement and also through your secondaries to show them. Um, they, there are some soft skills such as teamwork and social skills, but also there's technical skills that you, they're also looking for with con quantitative reasoning and uh, written communication, which can be seen by the way that you write your personal statement. These exist so that the schools have a better understanding of um, being able to assess you in a holistic way, uh, because it can be, there are sub subjective things after having the um, initial um, you know, gateway entry of having your GPA and MCAT scored, but these are other objective items that they can kind of quantify to better measure uh, your fit for medical school. So uh, jumping into that, what application factors matter most? So very obvious that GPA and MCAT scores are the uh, most important, um, which is going to be, again, the uh, gateway to be able to get uh, your application to be looked at and not to be screened out. Uh, the other aspect is a personal statement gives the, you a chance to be able to speak about yourself, your experiences and say why you wanna become a physician and why this career is for you. Uh, the next uh, important slice is the extracurriculars, your secondary applications, which consists of a multitude of essays and um, prompts that are given to you and your recommendation letter so that professionals in the field or who know you are able to assess your abilities uh, to be able to become a great uh, medical school candidate and also a doctor in the future. Uh, less important is your background and undergraduate institution and your major that was chosen, uh, but that's why you have your GPA and MCAT scores that matter the most because it doesn't really matter what major you did it matters that you are able to uh, complete the uh, core courses that are needed for medical school. Obviously, interviews is not on here, but we'll delve into that uh, later on. But we're focusing on your written application for right now. So in terms of GPA academic performance, it's not going to differentiate you, but it's going to allow you to get through the door. So it is, I don't know how to stress this enough, it is very, very, very important to have a strong GPA and a strong MCAT score uh, moving forward. They wanna be able to know that you can handle the rigorous instruction that is given and the and uh, a really strong structure of uh, you know, foundation to be able to study because you're not gonna have that time to build that foundation in medical school. You already have to have that foundation going in. And that's also why your college performance is a predictor of your medical school uh, performance. Some schools um, on the Frida um, uh, website, actually, it does show that they have some GPA cutoffs that are noted. Um, and even if a school does not share that, they do have um, it, they do have like internal checks sometimes. And you can also check the class profile data in terms of median GPA scores and things like that. At the end of the day, your cumulative GPA. Um, does really, really matter. And especially those with the science courses, which is biology, chemistry, physics, and math, um, that is very important as well. So especially if you did a major that was not a science major, but it was you know something in the arts, you still have to have those core science courses and you have to do well on those uh, courses as well. And now the second part of that is your MCAT score. So just like your GPA, this is a foundational aspect of any application. Um, and especially in light of uh, one of our standardized board exams in medical school, the step one exam now becoming pass fail, uh, having this reference of a standardized exam from uh, the time of pre-med uh, becomes increasingly important. So these scores are crucial. Uh, and even though a GPA might more accurately reflect your academic performance over a longer period of time, because this is a standardized test, it can compare students from different institutions who perform different majors, who might have had different tracks leading up to medical school. So it's a crucial test. In terms of MCAT cutoffs, not too many schools will give you a specific cutoff number, but a lot of allopathic USMD programs will expect you to score in a certain range. This might range anywhere from a 505 to higher than a 510. 
Um, and again, the reason there aren't hard cutoffs is because this is a holistic process, but it's important to emphasize uh, how crucial this exam is to your application. So the next most important thing, aside from your hardcore stats that you can provide, is your personal statement. And it is a very important part of your selection uh, factor. It does not just have to be um, well written or, sh or show who you are, but it really has to uh, make you uh, define yourself as a unique individual and that people remember you by your personal statement. Um, so again, and this is why the holistic review process and the admissions committee needs to know more about the just your metrics and your candidacy. Uh, it does sound cliche, but it truly is the heart and soul of your application. Um, you can really showcase your writing skills with vivid imagery and really have thoughtful anecdotes that are well, um, well written and a strong self reflection to work in your favor here. Um, and this is also a good opportunity to show the AAMC that you have those core competencies that were mentioned previously, and um, you can show off some of those soft skills that we talked about, your commitment uh, for passionate uh, patient care, and also maybe a relevant anecdote that showcases this, and also your ability to work as a team, or even to self-reflect on a difficult time and how you are able to overcome that struggle. Um, they do want to see that you're passionate about something and that you're also passionate about uh, and it how it ties to medicine. And writing that compelling narrative that really complements your application is going to elevate your application over others. So after the personal statement, the extracurricular activities that you mentioned are an important aspect of your application. While any one activity might not be quite as important as your entire personal statement, which is your uh, full medical narrative, the combination of these experiences give you things to talk about, not only in your application, but also in interviews. They show what interests you pursue. They show that you, you meet a variety of the core competencies and that you are a strong candidate for medical school. So these are very important. Uh, I'd like to point out that you have a space to write about your three most meaningful experiences. So oftentimes this can be a situation where you can elaborate on something mentioned in your personal statement, or if it's something that you did not mention in your personal statement, uh, but you might've had a letter writer talk about it. This is a great place to discuss those uh, experiences further as well. Uh, the next aspect is letters of recommendation. I think we skipped a slide, there we go. So, and, you know, you're able to write very well about yourself, but the admission committees, they want to have some type of evidence to be able to back up the claims that you do make uh, on your personal statement and also on your, um, uh, on your extracurriculars. And this is why letters of recommendation are so important. You don't, just, you don't want just a letter of recommendation, you want a strong letter of recommendation from these third party perspectives to add the layer of credibility to your application. By being able to secure the strong recommendations, um, you ensure that your entire application is truly complemented and it really um, gives it these extra layers of getting to know you as a person. Um, and also, it's also is important in forging a deeper connection with those letter writers so they can be able to bring out those qualities um, in you. And you can show them your CV, maybe a copy of your personal statement, or even sit down and have a meeting with them beforehand and say that, hey, I'm interested in going and applying to medical school. Uh, I've been wanting to do this for a, a while now. Um, you know, would you help me write a letter of recommendation? You know, would you write a, letter, a strong letter of recommendation uh, for me? Obviously, you do not have you know, control um, of how these letter writers will be uh, writing your letter of recommendation and also you uh, many a times you do withdraw your uh, right to be able to to view them when you do submit these letters um, but you can guide them about writing certain things again by giving your cv and your personal statement and um, again you want to make sure that you choose people that have the best ability to um, vouch for you as a candidate for medical school that truly know you uh, very well And once you've gotten past the stage of primary applications, you'll start receiving secondary applications. And these can carry quite a bit of weight at that stage in the application cycle. 
These can be anywhere from uh, two kind of non-specific essays uh, to six or seven very specific essays that can be very demanding or inventive depending on the institution. So these essays can really provide insight into how well you align with the school's mission, uh, unique aspects about yourself, uh, unique experiences that you've had, uh, and these will play a major role in uh, deciding on interviews once you've reached this stage of the application cycle. And what factors aren't as important? As said before, um, potentially your background isn't as important um, as other items. Your background can be important if it is tied in with who you are as a person and with your personal statement. Um, but it's not a factor as if, you know, if you are from a rural area, then it's going to preclude you from being able to go to a school that is in, in an urban environment. Um, or um, if you are, in a, or if you want to go to a medical school in a rural rural um, environment, then um, if you lived and were born in a rural community, maybe that may help you because you can attest to that in your personal statement. But again, it doesn't, it's not um, a screening factor uh, when you're applying to medical schools. Um, the next is the college's prestige and reputation. Again, um, they just want to make sure that you have that strong uh, GPA, especially the science GPA and the MCAT score. Um, but it shouldn't, again, preclude you from getting into a medical school. The only, uh, you know, the only factor that I, I may see here is that if you are applying to a prestigious medical school in the top 10, like, like Harvard Medical School, and that you um, come from a community college background or a state college, and um, there are particular feeder schools that go into these Ivy, Leagues, um, Ivy League medical schools, you may not have as high of a chance as someone else to be able to get into these schools. But it, you know, it's not there are other factors that are at play here. It's not the only thing. Uh, again, as long as you just have a very strong uh, science GPA and you have a strong MCAT, school, MCAT score, it's, you're not gonna be screened out for these reasons. And now we get to the interviews. Uh, we didn't put these in that uh, breakdown of what's important because you get to the stage, interviews matter the most. So it's a great uh, opportunity to get an interview. Uh, you should feel very, feel very proud of yourself for getting any interviews. And once you get to this point, schools are no longer looking at your academic accomplishments, uh, no longer looking at your accolades. They're looking at how you perform during interviews. They're looking at how you talk to people, what your personality is like, how you can think about things on your feet, and how you work in teams. You might have different styles of interviews. Uh, at this point, I'm sure some of you might have heard of traditional interviews versus multiple mini interviews. Um, they test different aspects uh, of your personality and your abilities. Um, and uh, all of them are important to prepare for. Uh, I just want to emphasize this can be very scary to uh, consider that this is what might make or break your candidacy for a program, but you should feel very excited to get interviews and only count them as an opportunity. So um, what is a fit factor? So fit is essentially how your profile and your personality aligns with the medical school and their mission statement and the atmosphere that they are trying to provide to create uh, future physicians. So essentially fit is a two-way street. They want, you want to feel that you will belong to the medical school and be able to succeed there. But medical schools also want to feel that you are a good fit for their incoming class and that you're gonna be able to contribute to their overall mission uh, state. To kind of understand whether or not you have a good fit for the program, you should see what, um, one, it's very important to go on the website of the medical school and be able to read their mission statement and also things that they offer, um, like what the school's location um, in terms of if it's an urban or a more rural environment, um, if it's a very diverse um, demographic that the um, students clinicals, your personal budget to see if um, the school, you know, tuition is very expensive. So that also uh, plays a factor where you want to go into medical school and the um, and the, um, the price it takes to be able to live in that certain location, like in a city versus a more suburban area. Um, also what extra, extra curricular, extra curriculars they offer and what research opportunities they have as well in class size. Um, 
again, the medical schools do seek students that they believe will fit into their mission. And so if you are very interested in research and have a lot of research experience and want to be able to continue that, maybe, you know, going to a top research school such as, you know, Columbia, Harvard or Yale um, will be something that you would be more interested in applying for. But if you're more readily prepared to uh, want to provide care for the underserved communities that or rural communities, you can go to Mercer University School of Medicine um, to be able to, um, you know, fit for those needs. And that's how you kind of assess what, where you're going to be applying and how you're going to choose the schools that you're going to be applying to. And so how do you show off uh, your fit? Like I said before, you do definitely want to do your school research. Um, want to, you want to know and be able to answer what draws you to the school and what is the school known for and does it align with what you want or the activities that you've done before? Because in the school secondaries, these kind of questions will come up and you would have to have good um, responses to these prompts. And um, you want to choose anecdotes and application narratives wisely. So, um, for example, the Johns Hopkins uh, School of Medicine is dedicated has a mission statement that states that they're dedicated to prepare students to practice compassionate medicine of the highest standards and to contribute the advancement of medical knowledge. So, you want to demonstrate times when you were particularly compassionate in a patient kind of centered way, and maybe this may be through a research experience that you had or um, a club that you created on your college campus to be able to exemplify that. And you want, and you all, you want to kind of think that about these things in the back of your head um, while you're choosing which uh, schools to apply to. And during this process, you also want to know what your personal mission is and um, what, are, what would you be dedicated to um, you know, being a part of in the forefront of, um, of uh, being a physician? Would you want to be more involved in research? Do you want to be more involved in serving rural communities? Um, so you just, um, or do you want to, you know, you know create, you know, go into global health? So those items, you just want to be able to make sure that your personal mission aligns with those schools. So here are your, some tips to enhance your application is um, one, give your GPA a boost. So if you already apply or you already uh, completed college graduation or you're about to complete your undergraduate education and you believe that your maybe your science GPA is not the strongest, um, you can consider going and applying to a post back program or a master's program to be able to kind of give you that extra edge so that you're not screened out for um, certain GPA requirements. Um, retake the MCAT, cannot stress this enough. Studying for the MCAT is uh, quite rigorous and um, very, uh, it really tests someone's uh, patience and endurance. But if you did not score so well on the MCAT the first time around, uh, we urge you to retake it so that it gives you the best chance of being able to get into a medical school um, so that you aren't screened out so people can be able to actually read your amazing personal statement, all the other extracurriculars. Um, to do to um, you know to review. Uh, the next thing is take time writing your personal statement. It is the second most important thing other than your metrics, and so you really want to um, write something that truly reflects who you are as, as a person and kind of uh, reflects those soft skills that we were talking about. Um, you know, the fourth thing again, give your recommenders the materials that they ask for, or you know that would be very helpful in writing your. Um, letters of recommendation like your CV and your personal statement. And also you can guide them in saying, this is something in my CV that I want you to attest to because this is what we worked on together. I think it's really important to talk about it, especially for this program. Um, you can also assign different uh, letters for different, um, for different programs as you see fit. And you can also write different personal statements. Um, actually not uh, for, for residency you can, but I think it's only one personal statement. And for um, also your unique background, you want to be able to discuss that in your personal statement and throughout your extracurriculars as well. All right, that brings us through all the content that we wanted to cover. So I want to open up the floor for some Q&A. So feel free to pop your questions into the Q&A box and we'll go through those. Um, and while we're waiting for a couple of those, Nakia, Rouge, what are some things that you wish you had known going into the med school application process? I think the MCAT 
um, was would be the biggest one to have to retake it. I did take retake my MCAT once, um, but I think even if I retook it again, it would have made it easier for me to have more medical schools to choose from. I did actually have both allopathic and um, osteopathic schools to choose from, and I chose to go to an osteopathic school because it was a better fit uh, for me. Um, and I am in a surgical specialty, so you can go to an osteopathic school and still, you know, go into any specialty you want, um, especially nowadays, because I think that was um, five years ago that happened. Um, but I think if I had known that MCAT is such a big factor, that that would be my main, main focus um, going in. Uh, that's a great point to bring up to Nikki about the osteopathic programs. Uh, one of my good friends is applying into psychiatry residency now and uh, from an osteopathic program. And uh, we just submitted applications uh, last week and he's already gotten several interviews. So you can be very successful coming from an osteopathic program. Mm -hmm. uh, to the purpose of allopathic programs um, and all programs, uh, agree that grades are very important. And one thing I found is um, there were a lot of uh, things that I wanted to do in public service and global service. And because I was so focused on grades uh, early on in my career, in my undergraduate career, I didn't take the opportunity to really explore, the, explore those until I was maybe a late sophomore. So I'd really encourage you um, early on in your undergrad career or wherever you start your pre-med career to look at things that really interest you, things that you're passionate about within the healthcare space or within the space of service and uh, find ways to make a commitment to those over a longer period of time doesn't have to be a, a very large commitment each week, but just make sure that you're investing some time and learning about the community you're serving. And um, I think that's very crucial to uh, whatever uh, space you are uh, joining a medical school within uh, uh, the variety of med schools that you can go to, be those research institutions or more uh, public health focused institutions. Yeah, I totally agree with Peruj. It's definitely more about quality of your experience rather than the quantity of how many you've done. So it shows val it shows um, you know volumes if you are you know a president or you um, founded a club versus a part of like four different clubs and just a member. Thanks for all that great information. Um, and to our viewers, you have two doctors here who are very willing to share their story. So feel free to pop in any questions. It doesn't necessarily need to be about decisions being made. Um, I also I do want to add one other thing because we do talk about that personal statement but um, the one of the biggest factors of people not getting into medical school or being waitlisted versus accepted is not turning in your secondaries in time so a lot of time these medical schools will not even look at your application and consider it complete unless they have a secondary and some programs do not do any screening processes for the secondary. So just because you receive a secondary doesn't mean that you have a high chance of being of going to that school. Like Peru said before, it's really the interview. That means like, okay, they've already screened you. Now they want are interested to see who you are. But have a turnaround time of your secondaries for about like one to two weeks maximum. Because uh, it is medical school admissions is on a rolling basis. And so in order to do that, because you may be overwhelmed with a lot of secondaries to do, you should also pre-write and have the responses to your secondaries done ahead of time. And we have some great resources. And also when you are working with a consultant, they have great resources to kind of template out those common responses so that you can turn these out quite quickly. And that will give you the best chance of acceptance. It's a great point. Um, looks like Esther has a question. Um, I'm gonna allow you to ask your question. Hello, can you hear me? Okay, so uh, I just wanna check where you can um, support with this entire process and um, what scholarship opportunities do we have for this um, program? Because I'm excited to be here and uh, thanks for all the info you've been able to pass, but um, 
specifically, I'd like to know uh, where you come in. Now, do you support this entire process? And what are the available scholarships, uh, you know, for some of us that might require that? Thank you. Thanks for that question. Um, and Sierra Advantage is here for all parts of the application process from just beginning to think about your med school candidacy to putting your applications, the interview process, everything. Um, don't, we will help students apply for scholarships, but we don't offer any scholarship opportunities through our program. And yes, yeah, speaking to uh, the sort of uh, service we provide for students applying, uh, we help students at any stage of the application and uh, kind of throughout the, those uh, most important months uh, leading up to uh, preparation for a major exam, uh, if you uh, are uh, working on MCAT preparation uh, in uh, preparation of primary and secondary materials. And then uh, once you've gotten to the stage of interviews, uh, we do some very rigorous interview prep to make sure that we've covered all our bases and made sure um, that you're ready for the questions you might encounter. Nakia, do you have any other thoughts on kind of what the most valuable parts of the pro like process that we help with are? Um, I mean, again, it depends on what you, what program you're interested in enrolling in, because um, we have full support, which really means that it depends on your consultant, but you basically have one-on-one -on -one access throughout the entire process. With your con with your consultant, if you do, I think the the you know the full involvement. Uh, program and so which means that if you ever have any questions on any application of like you know prep your uh, primary secondary interviews and even choosing what medical schools you want to uh, go to and, and ranking them um, you know we're part we're part of that entire process um, we have a question here do you have any advice about British international students and where the importance of prerequisites fall in the application I don't know if Could we you, have specific I'm information sorry, on. Oh, sorry, go ahead. Oh, no, I, I don't have too much specific information either. Um, I was just going to ask if uh, uh, Kadri could expand on the uh, prerequisites that they're talking about. Um, well, they're popping in some more information about prerequisites. Um, you want to just give us a little bit of an, of an overview about those? Sure. Yeah. Um, so I personally have not worked, I'll, I'll uh, uh, clarify that I have not worked with an international student myself through Inspira. But what I will say is that um, the international process can sometimes be a little more rigorous than uh, people applying from the U.S., uh, itself. However, the basic uh, app, portions of an application are pretty similar. Uh, you want a very strong MCAT, you want a very strong GPA, and those things probably matter even more for an international student. On top of that, um, it's great to get uh, the opportunity to have letter writers who work in some of those institutions that you might be applying to. Let's say that you want to go to UCLA. Uh, maybe if you've worked with a researcher at UCLA who can write you a letter of reference, uh, having some more targeted uh, uh, recommendations from people in U.S. programs could be very helpful in those situations. Uh, in terms of the other prerequisites, uh, having an emphasis on service, uh, showing dedication to research, uh, kind of looking at that EAM model and finding a way to build a narrative for yourself, all of that remains very important. And it, it's just uh, uh, the way it is, is that it just has to be a little more competitive from a national student. Yeah, that's also not high. Oh, go ahead. No, sorry, go ahead. Well, I personally also have not had experience with international students trying to get into medical school, but I do work with um, a lot of the residents who are IMGs or international international medical school residents who are trying to get in. And some of the issues is, you know, visa and things like that. So that also is something to look into 
of like how you can legally be able to um, complete your education here in the United States. And exactly what Peru said, it's really important to find something that would tie you to that medical school, um, you, know, or, you know, have institutional ties so that they are more keen on um, seeing how your credentials, credentials are essentially valid because the only standardized way to kind of look at that is probably MCAT. A GPA may not even be standardized internationally when compared to some academic programs here within the US. So um, those are probably gonna be the bigger factors. Great. Um, is there a requirement that med school students have wet lab experience or is there another type of med patient related experience okay? Are they referring to, you know, to be able to, uh, like as a prerequisite to apply for medical school or when you're in medical school, when they do wet, like wet anatomy lab? Um, maybe we, that's not specified, but maybe we, can we answer both of those? Okay. Oh, sorry. I mean, applying. Uh, to for applying. Um, I mean, a lot of the times, like for, I believe, uh, biochemistry and even for, uh, physics, they do have the lab component that's attached to it, depending on the medical, on the undergrad that you were in. So if you do have that, then it, it will be contributing to your science, but I don't think there's a specific wet lab <clears throat> that you have to do that is going to be needed to get into medical school. Um, and then in medical school itself, most people have a wet lab anatomy lab. And um, again, every, every curriculum is different for each medical school, but usually that's the wet lab experience that they have and they have a lot of um, simulation now as well. So you may have cadavers and also models uh, that'll help with simulation in terms of uh, anatomy and getting to learn the human body. And those would be considered quote unquote, um, wet labs. Awesome. And I'm not sure if that was uh, more just about having experience in a wet lab setting or specifically about uh, scientific investigation or research. Um, but if uh, anyone's curious about that either, uh, you don't necessarily have to work in a basic science or wet lab uh, setting. Uh, many people will do clinical research as well. So it's uh, if you are affiliated, if you work at a undergrad institution or if you were doing a master's or post back program at an undergrad at a institution with a medical school, uh, feel free to reach out to some of those investigators in that school and see if there's any place to do any sort of chart review or work on clinical trials. Um, those can be great experiences to also uh, strengthen an application and show your dedication to research if that's important to your med school career. All right, we'll put out a last call for questions here. Um, and I think that that last question kind of raised a point that we didn't cover too much about extracurriculars and um, experience in working with patients, um, shadowing doctors within that application process as well. Um, I know those are all pretty important parts of the application process, how do you feel like those factor into decisions kind of in that ranking order? Um, I think it is very important in decision making, especially with the aspect of fit, um, because when you are inv involved in certain types of extracurriculars, if it is more research heavy or community service heavy, or even, um, you know, uh, it can be even like legal litigation heavy if you're involved in um, health, you know, laws for, for health as well. I do have some candidates who are interested in that too. Um, those are important things because it really speaks volumes of what your interests are. And um, if, if that is not something that the school supplies that you may also show initiative in knowing how to start something like that. So if you like founded a club on like legal health um, and that's something that the program doesn't have and that you know that, then you can you know, speak volumes to that. So you wanna just be able to make sure that you do things that interest you and then find medical schools that kind of showcase and can complement those interests or that you have the skills necessary to create your own you know, chapter or club at the, at the school. So yeah, but the extracurriculars are definitely um, really important because it kind of defines, helps uh, de define who you are as well. All right. Well, thank you all for being here. I think that wraps us up um, for today. Nakia, 
Bruges. I really appreciate um, your time and all of this fantastic information. And to all of our participants, we'll send out an email in the coming days that will have a link to the recording of this webinar. Feel free to reach out to Inspira Advantage for any questions that you have. Um, if you want to find out more about our offerings, you can schedule a free consultation with our team. Um, and I wish you all good luck in your um, application endeavors. Um, hope you all Thank have you a for having us. yeah. Have a great rest of your day, everyone. Um, take care. Thanks, everyone. It's great to meet you both. Thank you.